Here's everything you need to know about low back pain. This is 30 years condensed into a very short video. Firstly, what is low back pain? If you've ever felt low back pain, you'll know what it is. Your low back is this region here, your lumbar spine, and pain in this area is what causes us to think about that part of our spine. It's usually accompanied by some sort of limitation. We might feel a little bit stiff after sitting for a while, and we have other symptoms that may be associated with it, like sciatic pain, pain that refers to the front of our groin, okay, and even numbness in our toes. Low back pain, like any pain, is actually a healthy reflex caused by our brain. That might surprise you that it's healthy. Why would it be healthy? Your brain is calling your attention to your low back region via an unpleasant symptom. Now it could be pain, it could be pins and needles, it could be a burning sensation, or it could be just uh, stopping in your tracks and bending you over, okay? So it is a healthy reflex. Your brain recognizes that there is a threat to the integrity of the nervous system, which means the spinal cord and the nerve roots, which exit the lower back area. Now, why would your brain want to call your attention to this area here? It doesn't know. It just knows that there's a threat to your nervous system that is caused by many things in our day-to-day -day lives. We have to remember one thing. There's two, two types of pain, acute pain and chronic pain. By the time we receive pain, usually the underlying cause or causes have been occurring for a very long time. Unless it's a fall or an accident, that we can directly identify the pain occurring with that incident. Most of us don't have that situation occur. We have something that, like the straw that breaks the camel's back that calls our attention to that area. So there's an underlying dysfunction occurring, usually for quite a while before the brain perceives that as a threat to the nervous system and stops us in our tracks. It needs to make an unpleasant symptom like pain occur to actually impede us from continuing doing what we were doing and worsening the problem. So hopefully for you guys that are in pain, that makes sense. That makes it a little more easy to accept, okay? And that will divert our intent, attention sorry, from the pain to the importance of actually looking for the underlying causes. This is something a lot of people fail with. They have pain and other symptoms, they don't use them as an opportunity to look for the underlying cause. So I'm actually imploring you almost in this video to look for that because this is your golden opportunity to stop it in its tracks and change literally your future because you'll be looking at restoring the function of your spine as opposed to continually taking medication and doing other interventions just to sort of mask up the problem, okay? Now, what are the causes of problems, whether they're acute or chronic? Now, we've already mentioned a few of the acute ones, things that we can relate a trauma to, an accident, spending time in the garden, pulling out weeds or bent over or something unusual. These are the things that happen and have a direct result, okay, with the function of our spine. Most of the causes of pain are chronic or they're acute exacerbations of an underlying chronic problem. What are they? The list is enormous. And in my book, The Secret of the Healthy Spine, you'll actually read about them. I documented 30 years of causes so that you guys can see things that you're doing in your day-to-day -day life that you didn't know were causing problems. But if we look at the spine, we see that the segments of the spine, two vertebra and a disc, which I'll go into in a minute, are actually a little machine and need to be moving constantly. If we recognize that modern life and either sitting in a good chair or an inadequate chair like this one here will influence the function. Sitting in a chair full stop's not good because they're simply not moving. Okay, we've got to ask ourselves whether we're doing exercise, whether we have a sedentary lifestyle, whether we're overweight and therefore affecting the function of our spine that way, whether we smoke and smoking dehydrates our discs because it reduces blood flow to, flow to the area, whether we're drinking enough water, okay, muscles are 80% water, so we need to drink water to be able to nourish our muscles, okay, to give them what they need to function correctly. So when we talk about different tissues of the spine, we can often focus on one tissue that we might find in an MRI or an X-ray that's actually clearly wrong. For example, a disc hernia where we might have a, a disc 
piece of disc material that's come out between the two vertebrae and is touching a nerve or the spinal cord. However, this often narrows our vision to just that problem and that tissue being the only cause of pain. We have to understand that this is a process of dysfunction that's been occurring for a long time and involves multiple tissues. So let's be careful looking at one tissue and focusing on that as a treatment cause as opposed to looking at the symmetry of the spine. Is your left side equally taking the load as the right side, okay? Maybe it's not, maybe you have a scoliosis, maybe you do a sport that's favoring one side more than the other, maybe you have one leg shorter than the other, therefore throwing more load on one side of your hip, knee and foot than the other. There's many causes of asymmetry, but you've got to look at that. If that's the case, obviously muscles one side are functioning in a different way to muscles of the other side. Okay, that's one. Two, have you had an impact or a fall that you remember? Or maybe many that you can't that have also altered muscle lengths due to contraction that's occurred after it and due to either not stretching, not giving it attention or whatever reason, never had that attention to be able to increase those lengths again, have them functioning both the same on each side. So there's the muscle side. Ligaments that join bones, of course, if vertebra are misaligned, okay, then of course ligaments that join vertebra on one side will have different lengths to the other side. That's another tissue that's affected. Tendons, tendons have attached to muscles. Of course, if a muscle shortened one side and lengthened the other, well, the tendon also will be taking more load on one side than the other. Is the tendon inflamed? Can it get to that point where it's inflamed? You also have to remember that there are multiple levels of muscles and soft tissues. It's a bit like an onion and the layers of an onion, okay? There's many, many layers to the onion skin. Of course, one layer might be relaxed, another layer might be contracted, so that when we're doing any form of treatment, we need to consider the fact that we're actually going through those layers to get to the deeper tissues, okay? There's many different layers, and if you look at muscles like the multifidus muscle, these intervertebral muscles, these intrinsic muscles, way deep, we can't get to those when we do massage. So a lot of people also ask, well, what's the best treatment? It depends, because if we're recognizing that there's multi-tissues involved from a problem that's multifactorial, including physical causes, I've mentioned a few, but sitting, lying uh, face down when you sleep, falls, lifting in inadequately, maybe you're breastfeeding and you know, overloading one side more than the other, maybe a woman using high heels, look, there's endless physical causes. Chemical causes, is your diet 10 out of 10, or is it a seven out of 10? And if you're not giving yourself 10 out of 10 and it's a seven, why would you lose three? Is that due to alcohol, sugar, not enough hydration, or some other toxin. If that's the case, we're not giving the nourishment to the spine, the muscles, and everything else. So we can expect a certain degree of inflammation there as well. And lastly, chemi uh, emotional causes. How's your level of stress? How's your emotional state? If you're stressed out and cortisol is increased, that is also pro-inflammatory when it's chronically increased, okay? Poor sleep causes that. Unresolved emotional issues, okay? Is this a case where you might look for mindfulness before you look for stretching? I'm not sure. We just need to accept that most of us have so many factors involved in the exacerbation of any dysfunction of the spine. An inflammation caused, let's say, in a chemical issue can also and will also exacerbate the inflammation that's being caused by physical biomechanical problems. This is why low back pain is such a complex area and very misunderstood in the health profession in general. We need to see this, okay? And we need to sometimes and often work with multiple practitioners and multiple modalities when we're looking to restore function. So does that involve doing deep soft tissue work with a masseuse? Does it involve doing some sort of physiotherapy? Is this a question of us saying, well, hang on, I did that and I'm still in pain, so that doesn't work? Of course not. Maybe it does work, that modality does work, but it wasn't enough. Maybe it needed to be accompanied by something else. Okay, so when you're looking at your osteopaths and your chiropractors and physios, you need to realize that they'll probably be doing what they do well, but you might need to include other modalities for the other tissues involved. And if you see this on a global level and you see pain as a positive reflex to an underlying problem, that while you're focusing on that underlying problem, from many angles, 
including the dietary ones and the stress ones and emotional ones that I mentioned, then that's your best approach at reducing your low back pain. The aim is not to focus on the pain. We'll celebrate a reduction in pain, but we'll actually celebrate a lot more the fact that you've restored function to the point where your future is guaranteeing you satisfaction from all the things that you most love in life. Please focus on what you love doing and how that looks in 5, 10, 15, 20 years if you don't get on top of this problem now and rectify it finally. Use this back pain, the low back pain, as a golden opportunity to look for the cause. I really hope that this video has explained what back pain is, where it comes from and what you must do. There's no one size fits all because there is no one particular cause for every case of back pain. So just to conclude, if I asked you whether back pain was good, now, after this video, you'd hopefully say, yeah, thank God, it's a sign that there's something wrong with my spine. Remembering that the nerves of your spine go to every organ in your body. Without that pain advising you of that, you may have organ problems occurring that you don't know about because we don't have receptors for pain in those organs. So hopefully you'll see your brain does not do anything that doesn't make sense. We shouldn't override that and try and suppress symptoms. If we choose to do that, we do it for comfort, while at the same time we look for the cause. And with that, I wish you all the best on your journey.